in favor please say aye. aye aye thank you the meeting is adjourned we will now convene the uh, study session for may 28th the first item on our agenda for the study session is to review the agenda for the june 1st council meeting <clears throat> currently i think everything is on the consent agenda uh, various liquor licenses under agenda item three and different purchasing contracts under agenda item number four and agenda item five are Resolutions. Yes, Mr. Finter. On 5J, I thought that was really good news with the town of Gilbert. I didn't know if anybody, if Alex Deshek was here or something, but uh, love that uh, inner city or what, what's the right term? Cooperation between the cities. Uh, our CIO is here. Thank you, Mayor and Council Member Peter. Um, yeah, we're very excited to, we work a lot with Gilbert and so it was nice to be able to finalize this intergovernmental agreement with them. Um, this will allow us to do a variety of technology, different kinds of projects and share. Um, the first one, the most immediate one out of the gate is there's some conduit we want to be able to share um, to do some network connectivity between the cities. And so that's kind of the first one which is driving the timeline to get this going. Uh, please cost savings too when we uh, work when with it, folks absolutely because if we can share the trenching costs or we can you know we already have conduit and ground uh, in both places and we allow each other to share that um, there isn't uh, there is savings because there is an additional cost that we normally would occur yeah well I, I think it was just great to highlight that point with Gilbert with the uh, wastewater treatment facilities everything we do I think with the cities getting together it's a real positive so I, Thank I you. just didn't want it to go away on an item but a lot of hard work to you know doing there so thank you for doing that thanks mayor appreciate it. thank you thank you very much agenda item six uh, might be worth yeah. discussing <coughs> yeah, Mr. Richards. Right. yeah I'd like to see that the council report actually had two alternatives at the end so uh, the way it's written and so I, I was wondering if we shouldn't be discussing those um, you know I know the ordinance is written in a certain way but the council report comes off a little we could do this or this yeah and, and really I, I think that the direction it has been from council and the ordinance is the direction the council's in and so maybe it's worth pointing out uh, to people that the uh, what happened back in 2006 is the state legislature passed a statute that uh, moved uh, the election dates um, to the fall. Uh, previously, the city had had spring uh, uh, elections. And then uh, the city of Tucson and the city of Phoenix challenged that, and they ultimately prevailed in the Court of Appeals uh, challenging that statute uh, for charter cities. Um, but our charter also allows us to move our election to coincide with uh, the state elections if we choose. And that's what this, this ordinance is really doing, is really keeping uh, the elections where they were in the last um, the uh, last time to the fall elections So are we I think at one time tried to put something on our charter to get our charter in alignment with with that rule Did we have that on the ballot to a couple years ago? Do we need to do that again? Do we need to put something on the ballot to make sure our charter is in alignment with that? No, it's actually already, it's in the charter right now. It allows the charter uh, language allows uh, the council to pass an ordinance to sort of marry up uh, the elections with uh, uh, other other elections, either state elections or other city elections. Okay. And so that's what this ordinance is doing. Okay. And so that that provision is already in the charter. Good, okay. So no, no nothing needs to go to the ballot on this. It's just this. Just this, this ordinance. This makes it perfect, thank you. So really the news is that there's no news. Uh, we're just back in, we're gonna maintain the regular election calendar dates and, that we have tradition for the last few years anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, agenda item seven, this kind of caught my eye, because, 7A, because it's repealing an ordinance which annexed a portion of a road I thought, and I know we've had some discussions, uh, and there was some legislation this last session about de-annexing some property. I thought that was a nearly impossible thing to do. 
Yeah, this is this is a little bit different. This uh, this uh, this is an ordinance that was uh, I don't have the date on it. It's several years old, in which uh, some of the technicalities uh, that the, we we had annexed some property that Gilbert had already annexed in before us, just due to legal errors and the legal descriptions, and it's mm -hmm. it's. It's Power Road, and under an IGA, we had had an agreement as to who was going to construct certain portions and who was going to annex in different portions of it. And the, because of mistakes in the legal descriptions, that got messed up. And so the county caught this, and they never recorded this this particular ordinance that you're repealing. Which, and so we're repealing that ordinance. And then Gilbert, which had the mistake in the legal description, is de-annexing their property, which is which is the roadway, and then we're, we're annexing it in sort of in the, the next one. And so it becomes clean. It, the, the state statute had always allowed cities to de-annex property back to each other. Um, you, the, the recent uh, state legislation allows for de-annexation back to the county, which uh, used to be very limited, uh, only was allowed for parks and a few other types of infrastructures. Um, but that's something totally separate. This has always been on this this type of de-annexation that's on the, this agenda has always been in the statute. It's just okay. the road. Yeah. Just the road. Oh. This is right. So there's no cool restaurants or anything we're giving up. No. But. no. All right. Because our police force is bigger than theirs, I think. But. Okay. Dang it. All right. Agenda. And other agenda items under seven. Um, Introducing some ordinances, agenda item eight, working on a subdivision plat, agenda item nine, uh, adopting additional subdivision plats. And then agenda item 10, take action on the, on, uh, the tentative proposed fiscal year budget plan. Um, will there be some, maybe we ought to do some sort of presentation uh, in, a, in addition to what we've done previously some sort of summary so folks at home you know, get a Reader's Digest version of what we're voting on on that sure topic. Candace, we'll just come and give the high level. The agenda item that you have before you, uh, Mayor and Council, is the tentative adoption of the budget. What that does is there's no resolution that actually goes with this. It's actually just the tentative adoption of the budget that would happen on June 1st. We would then publish this budget in the newspaper for the next two weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of our publishing requirements. We would then come back on June 15th to do a public hearing and then the final adoption of the budget on that night. Okay. Can Thank you. you. Oh, Are there, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, is there anything that you'd like me to go through Why don't you today? do the general fund, the specific, that's when people are most interested in just kind of the differences between this year and last year. There's um, a slight Right, if we're looking slight. at um, what was included in your packet, is also some pie charts and what I can do is kind of draw attention as we mentioned in the when we kind of did that budget wrap up that the total budget um, is going up from 1.34 billion dollars to 1.61 billion dollars that is mainly due to a lot of placeholders that we what we put in the budget um, let me go and show you that real quick just to make sure that everyone kind of remembers what those are. There were a lot of large dollars that we had to actually place into the budget as a placeholder. The large one is $166 million for possible bond refunding. Um, we had to add that to our total budget because if we were to do bond refundings next year, these are the callable bonds. Um, the debt service payment that we would make would count against our expenditure limitation. So we had to, we have added that. That way it doesn't take up our actual uh, contingency budget authorization that we have in case we have a natural disaster or any type of other emergency that would come up during the year. We want to make sure that we have those um, budget authorization available. That's the main. So when we're going from the $1.34 billion to $1.61, um, there's a lot of that's the majority of it. We also have some one-time things where we're doing an early uh, payoff of our highway project advancement notes. The principal amount of that is $78 million. Uh, the total payment is $82 million. Uh, we had originally done about $4 million in interest each year, which was really passed through money. We received that money um, and then paid off the interest um, because uh, the local, the uh, regional funds are available earlier than anticipated. We'll actually be paying off those notes next year. So, so that's Mayor, $78. So, Mayor, year. just in council, just quickly, um, those first two items, which we have to reflect in a budget number, 200 and 
44 million dollars we have to show them even though it makes it look like our budget is increasing yet we're doing those to hold in case opportunity to save the city significant dollars but the way we have to disclose the payments so if we do a bond refunding of 166 million we're only going to do it if it's going to save the city significant money so that's but we still have to show it um, with the, the total amount of the principal that would be, or the outstanding debt that would be refinanced. Correct. We have to show it passing through our budget, so it would count as an expenditure, even though we have revenues We're paying it off in early. The and then the seventy-eight million. That's a great story because here we are. Uh, this is all related to the um, State Route Twenty-Four uh, financing that we were able to get that project done early, as well as we're able to use, uh, take advantage of um, the regional dollars to pay for it. Um, and this would then help us pay this off very early in the process. Yet, we still have, and th these dollars are coming from the region. The region, correct. And so, yet, they show up on our ledger. Mm -hmm. So, even though it, uh, the disclosures that we have to show, uh, the pub um, publicity, the publication, sorry, that we have to put out there will show this as, as our dollars that look like our budget's growing, we're actually showing these are two items, 244 million that will actually result in savings for the city overall. But I just want to make sure because when someone sees these numbers, they're going to think the budget's growing really significantly. But these, or 240 million dollars of that, is really just um, how we have to disclose this in our. Um, it's really a pass-through type of expenditure. Um, it's passing mm -hmm. through the the city of Mesa. Okay, a little ironic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of, yeah. that's what's yeah. struggling is because those two are actually, will be savings to the city, mm -hmm. significant savings to the city overall. Um, and then just quickly, I think, Candace, just to uh, highlight the general fund, which we're all um, right. familiar with, so let me um, go to that which is really you. kind of reflective of where we are in the budget, actually, what, we're, uh, what we've been working on. Oops. So uh, included in your packet is um, our, our pies that we talk about a lot. And I'm going to go to the general governmental category. So in our general governmental category, our total resources and our total budget, because that's the, what a balanced budget, each year we're required to have a, uh, adopt a balanced budget. And that means that our anticipated expenditures are equal to our, our anticipated resources available. And we're looking into the 15-16, it's $375.9 million. So of that $1.61 billion, only 375.9 is actually the unrestricted general governmental. Comparing that to this year, this year's number is 375.3. So we go from 375.3 to 375.9. That would have been a larger increase had we not come in and done those budget reductions um, this year. We would have seen those increases that we were feeling from the public safety retirement pension and then just normal inflationary pressures that we have within the city. Um, but we were able to maintain it at 375.9 million going into the next fiscal year. And if you want, this is the uh, by department kind of shows you where that lays out. Our public safety portion of that is just under 63% of that budget would be in the public, um, is police, court, and fire and medical. Great. Okay, great summary. And again, the, where this is beginning the publicity portion of this, they'll be published for the next two weeks. There'll be lots of opportunity for public comment if, if folks at home want to, to weigh in on the budget. Correct. And on, we adopted in June. Correct, Mayor. And on June 15th will be the public hearing that we will be opening. So anyone who has would like to make any comments during that time is welcome to come for okay. that particular meeting. Great. Thank you very much. Council, any other questions on that? Uh, I think that concludes the agenda for the June 1st council meeting. Uh, next item on our agenda is information pertaining to current job order contracting projects. Council, any questions on any of those pending projects? If not, agenda item three is approval of minutes from the May 18th, 2015 executive session. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. It's buzzing that unanimous. Agenda item four is acknowledgement of receipts of minutes of various boards and committees. Is there a motion? Motion and a second. You can choose which one was a motion or just a... <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. It's unanimous. Next item is to hear reports on meetings and or conferences attended. Council? Uh, it was a fairly uh, productive week. We dedicated a brand new swimming pool at uh, Mesa High School, which was, is fabulous, and hopefully the folks at home will uh, know about it and use it frequently. It's got the Lazy River water feature, which I think will be very popular. And we uh, broke ground on a new fire station yesterday. 
So there's been some good things going on the last few days. Um, if there's nothing else, scheduling of meetings and general information, Mr. Brady. Thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder, uh, there'll be an audit and finance committee meeting on June 1st, Monday, June 1st at 445, followed by our city council meeting at 545. Um, I guess following the this not this Saturday the following Saturday June 6 Councilor Luna will be having a cyber chat um, from 9:30 a.m. to 10:30 a.m. at the Think Spot at the Mesa Public uh, Library Red Mountain Branch. So we invite everybody to come learn the basics of internet safety and way to protect children online during that um, cyber chat. And all that'll be June 6. June 6. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is to convene an executive session. Is there a motion to that effect? Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We will now convene an executive session. <laughs> 